And welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study here at Faith and Victory Church. So glad to have you as we continue our series on the um, types of prayer. Now, we are right currently involved in um, the prayer of worship, praise, and adoration. And inside of that, um, that subcategory, we're actually covering the seven Hebrew words for praise. And uh, if you weren't with us last week, you'll know that we did cover the fact that, um, you know, that the... the um, the Greek, the Greek translators of the Septuagint used the word praise to translate seven different Hebrew words, and um, therefore we kind of lost some meaning as we come into English because we have one Greek word covering seven different Hebrew words, um, so forth. Which you know, in the process, that would that would have um, elevated the meaning of the Greek word and gave it di di different and richer meaning, but we we simply translated it coming in the Greek New Testament and even in the Old Testament to praise. So uh, we covered uh, last week, we covered halal, um, which is to be clamorously foolish in our adoration and praise to Yahweh. And then we covered, uh, which remember, so halal was the, is the root word of hallelujah, Yah being Jehovah, halal being clamorous, tehillah, the singing of halal, uh, singing in the spirit, uh, you know, just that, that, that really the highest form. This, this is the highest form of, of praise is the Tehillah, okay? All right, hallelujah. So today we're going to move on, and if you weren't here last week, go back and watch it because you can get all that, and, I, and I'm not going to recover it as good as I did it last week, so just go back and watch it uh, fresh for last week, and uh, praise the Lord. We are going to cover Yada and Toda, okay? And um, so let's, let's jump in here, and I'm going to uh, get my notes up. And on my phone, because I walked right out of the house, um, getting so many things together, and left my Bible sitting there with the notes in it. But I have my notes on my phone. So I don't like to do it that way, because if your phone dies, you're in trouble. <laughs> Hallelujah. Or if something else happened, you know, you're in trouble. And uh, we had, we had uh, Pat, uh, Miss, Miss H Sister Hagen had told, told, told people, said, listen, you, you need to have hard copies. You don't need to just go to the pulpit with your, your iPad or your iPod depending on that, uh, you know, you're going to end up in trouble. And somebody had done it and went up, and their their eyes. So, but let's go in here. Um, yada and Toda, and now they come from the same root word, uh, Yod, Y-A-W-D. And that means uh, the open hand, okay? All right, it's an open hand. Uh, and really, of authority. I mean, um, it's of authority. Okay, this this is kind of the root word here. Now, obviously, because they've they've uh, the word has changed. You know, the, it's a root, but it's not the meaning of this as far as fullness. So yada, um, the first one we're going to cover means to throw the hand. Okay, throw the hand up. And um, it means to do it, let's see here, it's the extended hand to throw the hand, um, to worship with the hands, to lift the hands, okay, um, so to worship with the extended hand, so worship with the extended hand. All right. Um, I mean, and, and you know, uh, to lift the hands. All right. So this this is this is Bible. Um, if we look at Second um, Chronicles twenty twenty one, it says, "Give thanks to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord for His loving kindness is everlasting." So I will bless Psalm 63, 1. So I will bless thee as long as I live. I will, yada, I will praise. I will lift my hands in thy name. Okay? Um, Psalm 107, 15. Oh, that men would praise, yada, the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. So here we have um, your typical Pentecostal charismatic worship. Hands up, you know. Okay, get our hands up. And that's very, it's scriptural. Okay, it is a biblical practice. People come and say, oh, I don't like that hand raising and all that stuff in church. You know, that's just, you know, whatever. That was your da. 
It's, it's a biblical practice. And even told, lift your hands. Oh, praise. Oh, yada, the Lord. Extend your hands in worship. Lift your hands to the Lord. Throw your hands. So this one, now, now this one is going to be more, um, the, let, me, let me use a different color here, uh, more exuberant, more, so, uh, ex, mm, that's not right, that is not right, just exuberant, more exciting. <laughs> Exuberance is the word I want, but I cannot remember how to spell it off the top of my head. It's exuberant. So, exuber er, Yeah, okay. And, okay. I wanted to put a U there. That's why I thought that's not right. That two U's there. Okay. Exuberant. This is more exuberant. Okay. It's a, uh, you know, you come in church and you you're just start, oh, God, you're great. Oh, I magnify you. See? Throwing the hands. We're lifting the hands. We're worshiping God with extended hands. Okay? All right? And so this, this is one, uh, one of the things that we do. Um, and if, if, you know, people who don't or, you know, and I'm not criticizing that they don't, but I, what I do criticize is them saying that's not scriptural or that's not, that's emotionalism or that's, you know, we don't, we don't lift our hands. That's, we got to do that for that kind of stuff. No, it's biblical. You see? Um, I like to be biblical. Amen. I like to follow the Bible, you know, in, in, in everything that we do. Um, we, we don't have a Hebrew word phrase for, um, for smoke shows and light shows, okay? You know, so if, if, if you know, I, I can't come back and say, well, that's biblical. I don't have one for it, all right? Okay? They didn't have, you know, well, their only smoke show was the glory showing up. And the only light show was the fire of God on the mount, all right? I, I think that kind of fire and light sh smoke show is perfect. What do y'all think? Okay, so this is the this is that 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 praise that that worship that that exuberant, you know, throwing the hands, lifting the hands, you know, their excitement there. Now next, let's go back to, to let's go to tada. Now, it, like we said, both of these words come from Yod, the open hand, and so it has the same principally the same root word, but it is more specific. This word takes on a more specific meaning, and it uh, uh, it means an extension of the hand in adoration. So, an extension of the hand in adoration. Okay, so you're extending the hand in adoration, a vowel, and acceptance. What is this? This is more worshipful. This is not as much praising as it is worshipful. Okay? Um, even, even the posture of the hands can change to instead of this, this, to this. You know, here, here. more turned, more, more reaching for in submission. Okay? Your children coming to you. You know, wanting, wanting, wanting you to hold them. You know, they don't come to you. They don't come to you like this. If they come to you like this, they're banging on you. They want something. Okay, they're banging on your leg or banging. You know, I, you know. But when they when they come like this, they want you to pick them up. They want you. You know, you know what I'm saying? They want they want you to hold them. Okay. And so this is more that this is more that posture. Okay. So you're coming in. You're, you're you have. You're, Kind of left that out, didn't I, Carrie? The extension of the hand, <laughs> okay? Actually, there we go. <laughs> extension of the hand in adoration, okay? Um, a vowel and acceptance. It also goes on to mean, uh, mean this, that it is by application. In, in application, it's a thanking God. That's really fits in with us. Or thanking God for things. That's not like our faith. Not yet received. 
as well. As the things. He has already done. Okay. Thanking God for things not yet received as well as things he's already done. Okay. Come with thank, thank you, Father. So right now, we're yielding to him. We're, you know, we're avowing, we're accepting him. We're accepting his answer. We're accepting his person. We're accepting his presence. This, so this, this would tend to be more than what we would think of as praise. This would be more along the lines of what we think of as worship and intimacy. Okay, although they're translated praise, with, with the uh, with the Greek, the, the English word for the Greek word used here, they were translated praise. Um, but this, it, it just this the whole this is deeper. It's more intimate. It's more worship worshipful uh, than yada. Doesn't make it doesn't mean that yada is wrong. It's it's a, it's it's biblical. Okay, but there's there's different posture here. There's times to praise and just be exuberant with God. You know, I mean, you know, to throw the hand, to worship, you know, glory to God, hallelujah. Amen. God, you're good. Your mercy endures forever. Then there are times that we become in our our, our time, even corporately or individ, intimate, uh, individually, more intimate, more worshipful. Okay? And th this is where Toda comes. Because we're putting our hands up. Our, our our posture changes. And it doesn't mean if you're holding your hands like this, you know, you're not working. You're not, it, but it, there's a tendency to relax when you be in a worshipful state versus the praising glory to God state. Okay? The, the posture of your body changes. And usually subconsciously, you don't really think you know that you're doing it as much as it's happening. Okay? You begin to worship the Lord. You begin to, you know, you, you, you see people reaching up to God. You know, instead of, you know, we're all just in there, we're singing, we're praising, we got our hands up, you know, glory to God, hallelujah, you know, lift, you know, we're lifting our hands, we're waving our hand, you know, it's more yada, but then we get worshipful, we get, we get, we become intimate with God, and, you know, you'll see people lift, have their hands here, they're, 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 you know, th this is that posture I'm talking about that's really representative of what we're talking about here, Okay. into God you get so yes thank you Joe good so we have um, Psalm 50 14 says offer unto God tada adoration and pay thy vows unto the most high um, Psalm 50 23 whosoever offereth praise whosoever offereth tada glorifieth me. And to him that ordereth his steps or his conversation aright, I will show the salvation of God. And we know this, you know, lifestyle, how you conduct yourself, steps. Okay. Um, so here we have uh, the, our hands. You know, uh, Peter wrote and said, lift up the hands that hang down. You know, we're, we're to lift our hands. Now, whether it's an excitement, and worship, you know, uh, the the mood of what where you are in the, in that moment determines that. Okay, I mean, you just, sometimes you just, you can't go. I will now yada God. I will now toda God. Um, you know, you're getting a little too you know technical trying to think about that. As much as we're we're trying to teach you, you know, show you that these are, these are the things that they did and the things that we're told to do. But it, it still has to be hard. We can't just sit here and kind of, okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are now going to have this part of the service. We only want you da. All right? Okay. Ah, uh -uh, that, that was a toda. We can't have that now. Okay? Or we're now going to yada. I mean, toda. No, you're dying right here at this moment, I said. Toda only. That's not what we're talking about. Okay? These are things that we're moved by in our hearts with God, and and we're expressing 
at that moment, the um, our, our spiritual communication with Him, we could be excited. We could just be excited about Him and how who He is, and you know, glory that You're awesome, You're amazing. I just love You. Where we're just You're dying. If you stay there long enough, you're going to move over to. Oh, I love You. I thank You for Your goodness and mercy. You've been good to me, and you're going to continue. And, and now you you come around, and like I said, this also this kind of demonstrates his posture <coughs> here. It has the posture of submission. Okay, you're yielded to him. You you are opening yourself and saying, I am dependent upon you. When, you're, when your child wants you to pick them up, man, I'm dependent on you. Even when you're telling them to get down and walk. I've got one on the back, and you want me to carry you. Jesse. Yeah. <laughs> You had your time. <laughs> it got to where I, you know, when, when I got Nathan, I had Nathan on the front, Shannon on the back. I couldn't pick up Jesse. You know? Unless I switched Nathan over to Janie and then I picked Jesse up. And, you know, all of them got carried in and out. Hiking trails. Yep. Suck it up, buttercup. All right. So, you know, we have, we have you know, the, this, this uh, the using of the hands in worship using of the hands and praising God. And um, it is, it is um, distinctive and charismatic Pentecostal worship, um, you know, more so than any other um, type that we see, okay? You see it more in, that, in those circles than you do anywhere else, all right? And, um, and, and probably because people got spirit-filled through the Holy Ghost, um, became more spirit sensitive and, and so forth. And, um, you know, we, we started doing more studies along this line and et cetera. Doesn't make us better. Doesn't make us more spiritual than somebody else. Just, um, you know, everybody's where they are. Okay? We, we want people, all everybody to be in a deeper uh, communication and, and relationship and uh, time with God. But, um, and, you know, when you're there and somebody else isn't, I mean, you're greater. You know, it's just it's just where you are. Okay, so all right, so we got we've covered that. Uh, let's um, let's move from there to the next one, and um, I I tried I tried using this on my um, fellowship of Christian athlete students, and they didn't get it because they they had no idea who Shambach is. <laughs> Shout yeah, somebody! Shabak, okay, Shabak. The shout. Listen, this, this, it's good to have a shout, Amen, Hallelujah. Um, to address and allow to to command to you know, um, it's to shout to command. triumph. Where would you have seen this? Shabbat. Most likely around the walls of Jericho. Okay. Um, Psalm 47, 40 and 10 says, clap your hands all ye peoples. Shout Shabbat to God with the voice of joy or triumph. Psalm 1 and 45 and 4 says, uh, one generation shall praise Shabbat, thy words, for, and declare thy mighty acts. Isaiah 12, 6, shout and, uh, cry aloud and shout to, for joy, O inhabitants of Zion, for great in the midst of uh, thee is the Holy One of Israel. For great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. People come in. They're just too loud in that church. They're all there shouting to God and all that. 
We want we want pipe organ. You ever been in, you ever sing some of the old hymns that they were, they had them so slow that you had to yawn in between the stanzas? I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it was, you know, especially with a pipe organ. Pipe organs are cool, but you know, they can they can be <coughs> they're hard to sing with. I mean, you know, unless you're a trained musician or whatever, vocally, it's hard to go with that pipe organ. I have a hard time with them. I mean, I'm just. You know, I'm not yawning. I'm not sleepy. It just you know, it's the uh, whatever. So uh, it's 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 scriptural to shout in church, to command, to to, to triumph. These are shouts of victory. These are shouts of you know of, of your position and authority in God that He's given to you. These are shouts of of triumph before God. Okay. So when you're in you know we come together, there's there's times in in our song services it's, it's hard to call them worship, worship a lot of times what we're doing is not worship it's praising or it's um it's singing man to man you know there's man to man and man to god and god to man we you know uh, we're singing some things we sing you know um i can run through a troop, loop, troop leap over a wall hallelujah that's not singing to god we're really singing to each other we're kind of encouraging each other about what what the what we have in god and the and the victory we have in him. <coughs> Lord, you are more precious than silver. Man to God. Then Psalm, you know, Psalm 91 is a classic example of God to man. Because he set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will honor him. You know, that's God to man. Okay? So that psalm is a song book of the, of, of the, of the Hebrew church of the Hebrew assembly, of the Hebrew people. So when we look at that, we understand that when we're in a song service or the singing or the, the work, we call it we call it worship. Uh, some churches call the entire service a worship service or a worship experience. Um, you know, uh, we, we look for, you know, we call it, what do you call it? We call it Sunday morning service, Sunday morning worship. A lot of, most churches, particularly your, 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 your mainline, what we call mainline denomination, call that Sunday morning service, Sunday morning worship. Okay, and that's everything. Okay, so um, we when we begin to give definitive terms about something, we have to understand that we've done that by man to try to describe what we're doing. The Sunday morning gathering. What are we going to do in there? Well, we're going to we're going to worship. We're going to praise. We're going to teach. We're going to preach. We're going to wait for God to speak to us. We're going to we're going to speak to God. <coughs> okay. So that, that service, but in, in that part of the service, we usually set aside for singing and singing psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, making melody in our hearts to the Lord corporately. That, that's what we're doing. We're doing what we should be doing individually. There are times of Shabbat. Shout to the Lord. You know? There, I, I was listening to that just the other day. I mean, I just, it, I was just moved. I hadn't heard it in a while. And you know, I've got I've got David Engel's station on my Pandora. And so I just had that on and shout to the Lord came up. And I was just moved at the moment of, you know, the 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 building in the song of, of, of leading to shouting to God. You know, just shout. So, so now what you will see many times is you begin to get combinations. Usually, you will see yada more with Shabbat than you do Toda. Okay, what what will we see Toda um, coinciding with more often? Anybody kind of guess? What would you see? Uh, so, if we see yada coinciding more often with Shabbat, which word do you think we've already covered would be more when we we're in Toda? The adoration, the avowal, the acceptance. We'll see it more in Tehillah. Okay? So we begin to get these words in combination, these forms in combination. All right? And uh, not necessarily, but you, you, you will see more of that. So you, you'll, be, you'll have the, the throwing of the hands and lifting of the hands and shouting and commanding triumph. And you da and, and Shabbat together. There's an exuberance. The, the atmosphere is, 
is charged with an excitement of victory. But then in Tehillah and Yadah, when they're combining, they're combining and you you're, you're have your hands and you're uh, in submission and you're adoring God and you're singing in the Spirit and you're, the atmosphere gets charged with intimacy. There's an intimacy. Hmm? Yeah, well, both of them have emotions in them, okay? So this one is going to be more of an exciting emotion. This is, people are crying. <laughs> you see, they're just, they're just so consumed with his presence. So you're not, you're, not doing much, you're not doing as much shabaking here. As a matter of fact, uh, you'll see people, um, as they get kind of tada and tahila, they'll move into the next one. Barack, not Obama. To kneel. To bow. How many times have you been in the service where we went from the shouting and the lifting of the hands and the exuberance and then we moved into Tehillah? Um, you know, and, and really, you know, you, you, you kind of go, you get halal in here, and then now we've moved into, and suddenly the, the, the shabak, the shouting is, is not there. The hands are up. The knees are bowed. Singing in the spirit. And we're in intimacy. Okay? We're going to get into an intimate, intimate place. There's just, it's, it's a different, it's different. And I've been in service, you, 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 you go, you can have ebbs and flows throughout a service, you know, where you're, you're in, shab, you're in halal and yada and shabak, and then you go into tahila and toda and barak. And there's the, all the intimacy there. And the emotions change. And in and, and the, and the your your perspective changes because it's it, it, you suddenly become less aware of everybody else. I mean, we're all shouting, we're looking around, looking at each other, glory to God, thinking you know, it's kind of like, man, is God good? Yeah, He's awesome. You know, you're like you know looking to see each other going, God is good. And they're going back, yeah, all the time. But when you get over here, when you're when you're bowing the knee, when you're in submission and adoration, when you're in Tehillah, you're not looking at what other people are thinking or doing. You've gotten consumed with God. Not wrong. What I'm saying, it's not wrong. For the Shabbat and the Tada, Yada. It's not wrong. We're told to do it in the Bible. And we need the encouragement one of another to see other people excited about what God does. And God does this, man. God's awesome, man. Woo! You need to go to the step. Not, not, not every service is going to have all this. You understand? Not every service is going to have everything. Unless you're at Copeland's. Then you got to cover everything and then do, read the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation and have him expound on every subject all the way. Love Brother Copeland. He is he, the, uh, the, the, the phrase, the short window shall preach again doesn't work for him. He's going, he, he's going to preach again no matter what. He'll just go hold his own meeting and preach whether you're there or not. All right? You've got to love Brother Copeland. I do. That's where I cut my teeth on. That's, what, that's how I found out about Brother Hagin. Okay? Psalm 96, uh, 95, verse 6 says, Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel, Barak, before the Lord our Maker. Okay? Um, 1 Chronicles 29, 20, David said to the assembly, uh, Now bless, or Barak, bow. The Lord your God. Bow before him. And all the assembly blessed Barak the Lord. They, they knelt before him. Bowed low and did homage in the, in, in, uh, to the Lord and the King. Psalm 34 1 I will bless the Lord at all times, and praise shall continually be in my mouth. I will bow before him. Now, this is absolute recognition of his authority, of his personage, as the supreme being. He's the God of all things. 
and you're totally in adoration of him and singing in the spirit and worshiping him and you're just Amen. Hallelujah. And then uh, I didn't know we would get this far tonight, but um, the last one we're going to cover, which is the last of the seven words, is a mar. Okay. And trying to find a place to put Zamar. He was a good boy, so he gets to be on here somewhere. All right, Zamar. And it means to pluck. Dick, you'll enjoy that. String instruments. Instra. Yes. To make music. You know, it's music. Okay. All right. So, uh, Zamar, to pluck the strings of an instrument, to sing, to praise a musical word, which is uh, largely involved with joyful expressions of music and musical instruments. Now, we, we, had denomin we have a denomination in America um, that their motto is no book but the Bible, no, no um, music but singing. So pick up your Bible, buddy, and read it. Because it's full of musical instruments used in worshiping God. Hello. Satan was the worship leader of heaven and had tabrets. Tabrets means pipes in him. So he could sing and make music before the throne of God. That's why we say when, you know, the devil fell out of heaven, he fell right into the choir loft. Because you know, most of your churches, you know, your mainline churches that have choirs, usually that's where all their problems are, is up there in that choir. You know, that's the busybodies and the mouthy people there causing all the troubles most of the times up there in the choir. It's true. I wonder why we never had a choir. <laughs> There's a reason. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just messing about that. So it, it, it's, it's musical instruments, okay? Um, some people come up, I don't like them newfangled guitars in the church. It's a stringed instrument. We're, it's an instrument. We're, we're, we're plucking. They, they didn't have electric guitars back then. They didn't, they didn't have the capacity to have. And they didn't have what we would call a guitar. They had stringed instruments, but they weren't guitars. Um, they were they were designed differently just because that's what they had invented. You know, you go you go to um, the Eastern world and their their music has different um, different chords and different intervals and different things. You know, you ever heard heard Oriental music? You know, they've got different notes added. There's like, there's different notes in between what we have for our notes, and they come up they have different sounds. But for them to worship God on their instrument, that make them any less spiritual than we worship them on a six-string guitar or a 12-string classical guitar, right? Or an electric, you know, guitar. Um, what do they call it? What do they call that? Steel guitar, which is the table. It's the table, and they've and they got, the, you know, got the strings on it. That's a, that's a steel guitar. And, um, you know, that they, they use picks on that, and they, they got those, those two sets of strings and stuff. That's a steel guitar. But the oriental guitar doesn't mean, is it, or instrument, string instrument, is it any, any less spiritual. A harp isn't any more spiritual than a guitar. Although they're beautiful and hard to move around for a mobile church. You know, you're just going to show up with your harp. <laughs> you know? Got to track the trailer. What for? The, the, the harp? The harp section of the church, you know? <laughs> you know? God bless those people who can play that thing. And they're beautiful. The sound of it is beautiful. Okay? So, Zamora is to pluck the strings of an instrument, to sing, to praise a musical word, which is largely involved with joyful expression and music of musical instruments. Psalm 21, 13 says, Be exalted, O God. In thine own strength, so will we sing and praise Zamora, thy power. So, we're going to worship God in music. Okay? Um, 1 Chronicles 16, 9, sing to him and sing Zamar to him. Speak of all his wonders. So it's instruments and voice. Okay? Psalm 57, 8, 9, awake my glory. Awake harp and lyre. Um, not L-I-A-R, but L-Y-R-E. It's, a, it's, a, um, it's an instrument. It's not, it's not lying. <laughs> no, all liars have their part in the lake of fire. Not this kind. All right? I will awaken the dawn. I will give thanks to the Lord among the peoples. I will... Sing praises. I will zamar 
to thee among the nations. So singing with instruments in the church is scriptural. And we need them. Sometimes to cover up those who can't, don't sing well. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I mean, sometimes you need somebody playing the, or the instrument in a way that so you can sing and stay in key with it because the person next to you is so out of key. Me. Usually if you're standing beside me, you're in trouble. I'll be honest with you. Um, we, we had some people one time uh, that were leading worship, and they, they couldn't really, if they got to listen to me, they got off key. Because uh, just being on key was not my forte. That's just a nice way of saying, my, da my daddy used to tell me, he said, boy, you couldn't carry a tune in a bucket. <laughs> He's pretty much right. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't, I'm actually bet. you hear me now, you think, dear Lord, he's right. No, you, you hadn't heard, you didn't hear me in the past. I'm better now than I used to be. If you think I'm, I'm bad now, you should have heard me earlier in life. I've actually made progress. <laughs> Hallelujah. Brother Hagin said one time, he started taking voice lessons just so he could learn how to sing. And, um, Finally, the, the person came to him and gave him his money back. <laughs> he said, I can't help you. <laughs> You're the first person I've ever met that just told me they can't carry a tune. I can't help you. So when Brother Hagin was, you know, everybody be singing in spirit, he'd be up there talking in cadence, but he wouldn't be singing. You know, a song, a, a song was a, a song or an ode. He would ode. Okay, <clears throat> so we, we see here, we covered Halal and Tehillah last week. We talked about Yada and Tadah and Shabak and Barak and Zamar. Now, in a, in a singing or, or music service, Zamar is going to be involved in all of it. You know, when we're, when we're corporately together, you know, we have instruments, we have organs, we have guitars, we have trumpets, we have saxophones, we have clarinets, we have, um, you know, all sorts of instruments that can be going and playing while we're worshiping God, that's, and, and that is part of worship. I remember the first time I ever, first time I ever heard Phil Driscoll. I mean, I was at the 1981 Believe, East Coast Believers Convention. We had um, a friend of ours down in, he, he actually living down in uh, near Wilmington, now, now Southport, but he lived in the, in the Virgin Islands for years. Uh, but, uh, worked with Janie, his dad was her boss, and um, went to our church in Greenville, and uh, it was one of our friends. And um, why did I bring him up? Oh, he went. He and Janie and I and somebody else. We uh, we got hotel rooms and we drove to Charlotte from Greenville back when eighty five, when forty did when forty stopped in Raleigh, and they stopped at Randman Road. Run Road. That's where forty stopped. Eighty five didn't go. You know, you had to take seventy across um, from uh, Raleigh to get to eighty five and Durham, and then. When you got down here where 85 and 40 split up, business 40 and 85 split up near High Point, there wasn't an 85. It was business 85 down to, you remember those, remember that? Oh, yeah, you had to go down to Lexington and pick back up and pick up back up to 85, and that was all two lanes. It took forever to get from Greenville to Charlotte. I mean, about, about twice as long as it does now. I mean, now I think from Greenville to Charlotte's probably in the neighborhood of four hours, maybe four and a half, but it's two and a half hours here, and it's about, about, Four hours to get from Greenville to Charlotte. Now, back then it was about seven, just because of the roads. And uh, Greenville to Wilson was two lane, and every farmer pulled out. It was, they, I think they did it on purpose. <laughs> You'd be coming down there trying to bust it, and they go, <laughs> "What are they doing? They're looking at the tobacco over here, looking at the tobacco over there." And they go about three hundred yards down the road and stop. Wait for all the cars to come by, even the one that's three miles down the road. And then they go up the road, and you take off again, and you get another couple miles down the road, and rip. <laughs> took forever. Took, took you forever to get to Wilson, okay, back then. Uh, but we went down there. That was just a story for no reason. It was nothing to do with the sermon. Hallelujah. But we, we got down to Charlotte. And we were sitting in one of the, uh, we were sitting out there waiting. You know, we go, we go early and get seats. You know, we were so we had to get there early. As soon as I opened the door, run in and get a seat that was close, close as we could get it. You know, which wasn't usually close because there's so many people already there ahead of you. All right, and um, just you know, I, I can't spend the night out here in the middle of the you know parking lot. You know, but we, we go early, and um, that that one of the night services. This guy, this long, 
long, curly-headed, half-ball-headed guy walks out with a trumpet. And I think he's a roadie. You know, he's like somebody setting up stuff. It sounds like uh, Joe Cocker from Joe Cocker, Mad Dogs and Englishmen. You know? And I'm like, oh, my God. What is that? You know? He's just, he's just having his moment of, of uh, in the sun of, on the microphone in front of the whole building, make sure the sound's right. How wrong I was. Because that night he came out. This, I, I believe 81 was when he kind of got introduced to the charismatic world, the Word of Faith world, <coughs> at that meeting. Uh, and um, Brother Copeland had him come out, and I'm telling you, he picked up that horn and hit the first note, and I, and, I mean, shivers went down my spine. He, he worshiped God with his instruments, that horn. And uh, they asked Doc Severson one time, he used to be the trumpet player on the uh, Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. And uh, they, asked, they asked Doc Severson, said, what does it feel like to be the greatest trumpet player in the world? He said, I don't know, you have to ask Phil Driscoll. Yeah, so he thought Driscoll was the best at that time. So, um, but to say this, musical instruments, we don't, we're not no, no book with the Bible. I believe in the Bible. It's, it's, our, it's our main book. There's other books that have been written that help us understand the Bible. That mean they're, they're replaced the Bible. They bring light, okay? Um, no music but singing. But, you know, there's instruments. God gave us instruments. He gave us, he gave us the, the, the temple and the harp. He gave us, they gave us uh, wind instruments. I mean, God created that. He gave it. So Zamar is going to be involved in our worship and our, our praise worship experience with God, corporately and individually. You're at home. You feel like, you feel, you're kind of feeling, you know, halal, yada, and Shabbat, and you put on some cranking Christian music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, we're we're a church on fire, or you know, uh, <clears throat> I mean, something that's really you know really booking. You know, let's have a revival from the pulpit to the pew, or you know, God rides on the water, God rides on the flood, Amen. I mean, we're we're we're, we're but then there's times you just you want you want to you know, let's forget about ourselves and concentrate on Him and worship Him, Amen. And we get different music. We put on different music. So even in, in our homes, we can we can have music that helps set the stage for, for where we're involved in what kind of worship or praise with God. Amen? Amen. Did you have anything out of all this? Help anybody? Bless you? All right. So that covers the seven Hebrew words for praise. And so we've been talking about the prayer of praise, worship, and adoration. Here we are. Okay? We got some more different types of prayer to cover. Okay, so but this we had to take this little side journey here. Okay, because we wouldn't have covered the subject properly if we hadn't. All right, praise God. Um, because my phone was in use tonight, I don't know who joined us, but we're glad you did, and um, hopefully you got ministered to and blessed and um, enjoy what we're doing. And praise the Lord, Dick. Dick joined. That's the last one I saw. Ellie and Dick joined, and um, praise the Lord. Thank you all for joining. Others that joined, I didn't get to see who you are, but thank you for joining. Um, don't forget we're on our campaign and um, of $100 a month, we, we need, just believe God, we need two more people to be able to have our full 10. And um, so uh, if you know, just pray about it. Just pr not asking you to pray about doing more. I'm not asking you to pray that, that you'll come in. You'll join up with us, okay? Glory to God. I'm, expect I'm expecting to see the full debt reduction and removal by 18 months, so that would be next June. But I'm expecting seeing it before then, okay? I'm expecting to be gone. Hallelujah. And saving all that interest. Whew. And we just throw, that's a, I mean, that's, I've, I've kind of taken 15 mission trips on that interest over the past few years. Could have gone all over the world on that for Jesus. And it was, it was just sent to a financial institution. So we just, we got to get rid of it so that money can be used for the kingdom. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Praise God. All right. Listen, we love you. God bless you. Remember this. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Until next time, walk with God. Be a blessing, and we'll see you on Sunday. God bless you.